Hey guys, what's up Redactions here and welcome back to this brand new video. And today it's going to be a little bit of a special one because this one is actually going to be the first episode of the Setup Basic series. And with this first episode we're going to start out with probably the most important factor about setup which will be tire pressure and rims. Now your tires are the thing that connects your cart to the road. So getting them set up right is extremely, extremely important. Now guys, before this video starts I want to also tell you guys that I'm going to be focusing solely on OTK and road tax. Why? Well, because I drive those things myself. Now this this doesn't mean that the entire video for you is useless if you drive another class it just means that some things are very specific to my class and that you might need to take them with a little grain of salt if you race something differently anyways let's get started everybody knows that tires need air to function but what most people actually don't know is how much air they should put into their tires so for the tire that I have right here, which is the Mojo D5 tire, which is the tire that belongs to the Senior Rotex Max category, the range of optimal tire pressures when hot is between 0.75 and 1 bar. And keep in mind, that is ideal warm pressure. Now this doesn't mean that you can just put like 0.85 bars in there and then go out on the track. That's of course not going to work. Because when you start driving, you know, uh, you create temperature in your tires. And when that happens, the pressure will also start rising. On average, if you are pushing it to the max, the pressure will rise by around 0.25 to 0.3 bars. But that is just in theory. In reality, you want to put something even a little bit higher in there. So you are certain it's going to pass the value that you want it to be when it's hot. Then after you've done a few laps and the tires are hot, come into the pits. Then use your tire pressure meter to set the uh, uh, tire pressure to the correct pressure you want. And then go out on track again and do the rest of the session. But what is the correct pressure to put into these tires? Well, that depends on temperature, driver preference and how fast they are wearing. Let's explain this by using an example. Let's say you go to the track and it's about 20 degrees Celsius. Those are medium to hot temperatures and the ideal pressure for that I would say would be somewhere between 0.75 and 0.8. Before you go to the track, put a pressure in there that you'll know will surpass the 0.75 or 0.8 when you go driving. Then after a couple of laps, come in, set your tire pressure to 0.75 or 0.80 and then do the rest of the session. By the way, when you come in, you need to remember how much air you're letting out per tire. Then you can subtract the amount that you just let out from the amount that you started with and then you know the amount of pressure that you can start with. In the wet, it's a little bit of a different story. Let me get one of my wet tires. So this is one of my wet tires and as you can see, there are some grooves on there and it kind of looks like an F1 intermediate tire. For these tires, I really only recommend one standard pressure, which is two and a half bars. For the Mojo W5 tires, this worked perfectly. But if you're not using these tires, you might want to start out with two and a half and maybe play around with it a little bit. Maybe try two bars, maybe try three bars, whatever works for you. Just go ahead and test it, because that's what testing is for. Now let's talk about some of my favorite parts, which are wheels. Right now, I've got three types of wheels ahead of me. AXP, MXJ, MXC. So the AXP rim is made out of aluminium and aluminium rims are mostly used in the wet or in super super cold conditions. And of course this one right here is the wet rim but you actually also have this in the full sized dry rim. But to be quite honest with you, I've never seen anyone drive with AXP rims in the dry. So in short, aluminium rim, good for the wet, not so good for the dry. Then the next one, even though it is the same color, this rim is completely different. This is the MXJ rim, also known as the standard OTK rim. If you buy a brand new OTK card, it will come standard uh, with these rims. As you can see in here, there are some ribs running along this rim and that is because this thing is actually very lightweight and very thin. If these ribs wouldn't be here, this thing would just break as soon as you hit the track. And the fact that these are super lightweight can really be felt when you pick up the XP rim as well. Even though this rim is uh, quite a bit smaller, it's still also quite a bit heavier than this rim right here. So when do you use these MXJ rims? Well. The opinions about that are kind of divided. Whenever it's below 10 degrees Celsius, I usually put on these rims because they get up to temperature very, very quickly. And also they just give a massive, massive amount of grip. That being said, whenever it gets a little bit over 10 degrees Celsius, these things tend to give too much grip for my taste. But there are also some drivers who always use these rims whenever in whatever, you know, weather types there are. Well, in my opinion, you use these rims when it's 10 degrees or colder or when the track is very slippery. For other cards, I actually see them rocking these rims quite a lot. Even the factory Sodi card shifter team uses these rims for their shifter cards. Also, if you are in a junior category such as Junior Rotax or Junior X30, these rims are the best ones you can pick. So, a little bit of a recap. MXJ rim, standard OTK rim, super good in cold temperatures, a little bit worse in hotter temperatures. So, next up, MXC, the pièce de résistance. As you can see, these things have almost a gold color and are absolutely shiny from the inside. 
That's because I believe these things are made from 100% pure magnesium. And these things I believe are a alloy between magnesium and aluminium. But I'm not too sure about that. Also, the MXJ rim is a cast rim. And this rim is made in a turning machine. Like, they start off with a solid uh, brick of magnesium. They spin it around. Uh, and every time they scrape off a little bit. And then they eventually end up with this shape. So, the characteristics of these rims are, are that they are super, super, super consistent. Most drivers use these in the race. Because, well, you can set pretty much this exact same level lap time from lap 1 when you go out up until lap 20 the end of the race and with these rims that's just a lot harder to do they tend to give a, a big peak performance but after that they drop off these ones not the case also on average I feel like they give a little bit less grip than this one but they also give a little bit more trust in the cart with these rims the cart may sometimes be a little bit unpredictable but with these things you really know what the cart is going to do for every corner also as you guys can probably tell these rims have a lot more air volume in them than this one. That also means that when you are using these rims, your tire pressure will go up more than when you're using these ones. So that's something to keep in mind when you are trying to find uh, out the perfect tire pressure. So if you're like me, you're racing a senior Rotex kart with a Tony kart chassis, these rims are almost always the way to go. There are even some people that never ever touch the standard MXJ rims, which is, well... I wouldn't do that, but some drivers just only race on this on this type of rim. And to be honest, I really don't get why. Because when it's cold and when the track is slippery, this rim is really the superior rim. But I guess everyone has its preferences. And also, like with the MXJ rim, um, there are a lot of drivers who do not race on the OTK chassis who also rock the MXC rim. Just because of how consistent and how trustworthy it is. So, a little recap of the MXC rim. Super consistent, a little bit less grip, ideal for hotter conditions. But in the cold, you might want to stick to the MXJ rim. So if you own an OTK card, I recommend getting one set of each of these rims and then you're really settled. Then you really have something for each and every condition. These ones can be had for around 300 euros per set, but these ones go for around 5 to 600 euros per set. So that's a really insane difference. But luckily, I have a tip for you guys as well on that department. And that is my sponsor, K Racing. So K Racing is a web shop in which you can buy official, 100% original OTK, OMP and Rotex parts. If you go and shop on their website and use the code RED10, you'll get a 10% discount on everything you have put in your basket. And guys, I can guarantee you that you won't find these products anywhere else cheaper than on kracingshop.com. The code RED10 will only be available for a little more than a week, so if you want to get yourself a nice set of MXC rims, now is the time to get them. Anyways guys, that was it for this video. Now if you ended up finding it useful or just enjoyed it in any way, then I would appreciate it enormously if you would consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons. For you it's only a couple of clicks, but for me that's literally one step closer to my goal of one day reaching 100,000 subscribers. Also, if you want to learn how to change your car tires without using one of those dreaded tire tools, then there's a video right here explaining how you can do that. If you learn this skill, you'll not only stop damaging your rims, but also you can impress all the pretty karting girls that are on the track. Anyways guys, this video is done. Go learn a new skill by clicking the video right here and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.